All right, good evening, everybody. I want to welcome you back to another study of the Faith of Jesus Bible study we have tonight. Tonight we'll be discussing lesson number 11, what the Bible teaches about the Sabbath. I'm Pastor Carlos of the Cruz, and I want to welcome you to either Redemption Chapel's YouTube channel or Live with the End in Mind channel, which is my personal channel. Uh, tonight we'll be discussing the topic of the Sabbath. Why do we keep the Sabbath, or why should we keep the Sabbath? Um, was it that nailed to the cross, as some people say? Why is it that only certain people believe, or is it uh, in, in keeping the Sabbath, or is it just just for the Jews, for the Hebrews? You know, was that something just from the Old Testament? Is that unnecessary now because of Jesus? So we're going to find out. We're going to go through the study tonight. We're going to answer some questions. And uh, I pray that it may be a blessing unto you as it has been unto me. You've been going through the study and, and seeing what the Word of God tells us about the Sabbath. So let's pray and then we'll get into our study. Father in heaven, uh, we want to thank you for, Lord, just the privilege of being able to open your Word. We don't know for how long we'll have it. And God, we know that many a life was given, Lord, many a life was taken for the truth that is found in Scripture. And we thank you, God, that we have it today and that, Lord, we don't have to just preserve it in our hands and in our, in our possession, but we can also preserve it in our hearts and minds. And so, Lord, we ask that you be with us as we study. We pray that this might be a blessing to all who will join and all who will watch as well at a later date. Father, lead me and guide me, and may whatever words I speak, let it be according to your will and according to your word. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So here we have uh, a quote here, a statement uh, from Cardinal Gibbons from the book, The Faith of Our Fathers. Cardinal Gibbons says, you can read the Bible from Genesis to the Apocalypse or to Revelation, and you will not find a single line that authorizes the sanctification of Sunday, meaning you won't find anything that says we are to keep Sunday holy. Like the Bible says, we should keep the Sabbath holy. The scriptures speak of the religious observance of Saturday, the day that we never sanctified. <clears throat> Cardinal Gibbons is speaking as a Catholic, a cardinal of the Catholic Church. And the Catholic Church, obviously, uh, you can see down history, never kept the Sabbath. The Sabbath was always kept, or Saturday, the seventh day of the week. Um, and you can see all through history, uh, there's been a certain group of people that have always kept that day that stayed faithful and true to the Word of God. Uh, so here I have another, another quote here. It says, the expression, first day of the week, referring to Sunday, appears eight times in the New Testament. And there you have it in Matthew 28, verse 1, Mark uh, 16, verses 2 and 9, Luke chapter 24, verse 1, John 20, verses 1 and 19, Acts 20, verse 7, and 1 Corinthians 16, verse 2. It says, every time it is assigned the title, first day of the week, without attributing religious significance to it. In contrast, 59 times it refers to Saturday using the word Sabbath, which means rest. So the word Sabbath in the Hebrew and the Greek, obviously, uh, means rest. It's a time of rest. And God had appointed a day of rest. We will see uh, a specific day, a day that hasn't been changed. And so we will see what the Bible says and what day it is that we should be worshiping on. Uh, so let me just, it's kind of, here we go. Question number one, which is the day of rest according to God's law? Which is the day of rest according to God's law? The law meaning the Ten Commandments that God gave on Mount Sinai. Uh, Elijah, would you be able to read this verse or these verses? Remember the Sabbath day to keep the holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. Okay, keep reading. You nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made, made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all of 
is in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Amen. Amen. So what day is the day of rest according to God's law? Sunday. Hold on. Go back. <laughs> go back to this verse. What is what? the seventh day? So it's probably Monday. Nope. What is no. verse? Read, them, read what, what verse eight says. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay. Now keep reading. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord your God. Okay. You should do no work. All right. So what day does the week start on? Not the work week, the week. Saturday. <laughs> what does your calendar say? Oh, Sunday. Ah, you see that? Ah. So the first day of the week is Sunday which means the last day of the week is Saturday. Saturday. So there's yeah. seven days in the week, which means Saturday is the seventh day. Yeah. Yeah. So the six days, the first six days, God says, you do all your work. He says, you know, if you got to go to school, if you got to go to work, if you got to clean the house, if you have to buy something, whatever you have to do, you got six days to do it on. But the seventh day, that's the day of rest that the Lord your God has given you. That's when he says, and this is actually the only commandment, this is the only commandment that allows rest or it allows uh, like equality or a relationship, you could say, between God, humans, and animals. And you can also say the world. You can also say like creation, nature, because there's no type of work. There's, you're not supposed to be work, you know, cutting the grass, and, and working in the garden, um, you know, you're not supposed to be using your animals to labor or, or treating, it as, treating it as another day. Like, obviously, you got to feed yourself and you got to feed the animals and stuff like that. Even that, even things like that, you don't want to make it, it shouldn't be a labor. Like, it shouldn't be something that, you know, that should take your attention away from God that day because he wants you to rest on that day. He wants you to rest physically, but he also, also wants you to rest spiritually. So here we're going to go to um, Malachi 3, 6. And it says, for I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Meaning the sons of Israel, meaning the people of Israel, you know, God's people. So here the verse says, I am the Lord, I do not change. And this is, mind you, this is hundreds of years after God gave the law on Mount Sinai and he's saying, I don't change. So if the God doesn't change and God is the one that created the law, then by default, that means the law doesn't change. You know, we, we learned that thing in the last lesson, what, you know, about the law of God, about the 10 commandments. And, and we said, we, we said, we learned that the law is a reflection of God's character. And so, you know, it's about love, love to God and love to, to your fellow man or fellow woman. So if, if this is, a, if this is a, a reflection of God's character and God doesn't change, well, the law doesn't change, which means the Sabbath day still remains the same. So question number two, for whose benefit was the Sabbath made? Who was it made for? Was it made for a specific person? Uh, was it made for a specific group? Um, or was it made to just benefit God and, and for us to do, you know, for it not to be a benefit unto us? Uh, Anna, can you read this verse, please? Mark 2, 27. Yes. And it says, and he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Amen. Sabbath was made for man. So what, for who, who's supposed to benefit from this day? Men. Men. Us. Or, yeah, humanity. Yeah. yeah, this word for man is not just like a man, but it's actually like all of humanity, all of all of created beings that God has made. So this is a day for us to take advantage of, you know? Um, and, and sometimes you, sometimes I think about it, I'm like, man, God, God made us, God gave us a whole day to kind of just rest with him and to kind of separate us from the rest of the things in the world, the rest of our, our duties and responsibilities from the week. And it's like, Sometimes you feel like you want to just do more, 
And God is just like, hey, like I gave you this day, then you're supposed to take advantage of this day to, to be with me and to be with family and friends. And so God wants us to, to, to use this day the way he has given it to us. And like I said, um, Exodus 20, 10, it's not just a day that we benefit humanity, but also the animals benefit from it. Um, our, you know, if we have maids, if we have servants, if we have people that work for us, if we have a business, they benefit from it as well because they're supposed to rest on that day also. Earth, creation, right? The creation is supposed to benefit from this day because we're not supposed to be doing anything as far as, you know, working, in the, working the ground. It says, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. If you look at this same, this same commandment, the fourth commandment in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5, it talks about the Sabbath, but it says, when it says this, um, when he's talking about like, you shouldn't do your work, your servants, your female servant, your cattle, or any stranger, it says, because, um, it says, because I am the God who took you out of Egypt where you were once a servant, something like that. Um, here, let me read it. Cause I don't know. I don't know it exactly off the top of my head. Um, so I'll read it for you. And when I saw that, I was just like, wow, you know, it says, um, so verse 14 and 15. Verse 14 says exactly what's here, right? The donkey, nor any of your cattle, nor a stranger who's within your gates, that your male and female servant may rest as well as you. Verse 15, and remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. So he's saying, I brought you out. You were once servants. You were once enslaved. And all you did was work and get caught up in everything else that you're doing there or that they wanted you to do. Well, I brought you out and I gave you rest. So now whoever's working under you, you have to give them rest as well. And I say amen for that because God just reminds us of the deliverance he's brought into our life so that we can, we can live with him, so that we can be with him. And he wants us to be as well uh, that same kind of deliverer for those who are who are uh, who are under our um i guess our under are under our labors or or under our responsibilities question number three who institute if you have any questions or comments feel free to just let me know um question number three who instituted the sabbath and when did he do it when did he do it? Genesis 2 verses 1 through 3. It says, thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it, he rested from all his work, which he, which God had created and made. So who instituted the Sabbath? God did. God instituted the Sabbath. It was the day that he made. It was the day that he created. It was the day that he set apart and he blessed it. And what did he, when did he do it? Here it says, uh, on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. So after six days, God said, I'm going to take this day for me and for my creation to rest. So notice he did this. It says, who instituted the Sabbath and when did he do it? God did it and he did it in creation. He didn't institute the Sabbath at Mount Sinai. He didn't do it any, any time after. He didn't do it any time before Mount Sinai. He did it right after creation. And that takes us right back, takes us, uh, puts us right in Genesis. And then here's more, a little bit more support for that argument because it says, because some people think, you know, well, God gave the law of Mount Sinai and he gave it to the Jews. He gave it to Israel. Well, uh, Mount Sinai, that, that, that part of, of, of Exodus starts at Exodus chapter 20. Here in Exodus chapter 16, they, didn't, they haven't even gotten to Mount Sinai and the Lord is already, and they're already uh, realizing that the Lord is giving them a Sabbath. Uh, Elijah, can you read uh, th these verses, please? 
Then he said to them, this is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake today and boil what you will boil and lay up for yourselves all that remains to be kept until morning. Go ahead, read this too, please. Uh, so they lay, laid it up till morning as Moses commanded, and it did not stink, nor were there any worms in it. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. Amen. So here God is, this is when God's feeding them the manna. They have six days during the week. Every day God says, there's going to be manna, fresh manna on the ground. I'm going to rain manna down from heaven. Every morning you're going to get up and you're going to gather a certain amount for you and everybody that is in your family. And so he says, you go, you gather that specific amount. You don't take anything less and you don't take anything more. And so he, they go out, they gather the manna, they bring it back to their, to their family, to their tent or whatever. Everybody eats, everybody is satisfied. The Bible says whoever gathered more had enough and whoever gathered, you know, whoever gathered more, they didn't have anything left over and the whoever gathered less didn't lack anything. And God says on every day you're going to do that. In fact, if you, if you gather more than you need, if you bring more into your household than you need and you leave it for the next day, it's going to breed worms and it's going to stink and you're not going to be able to use it anyway because I told you I'm going to provide for you fresh manna the next day. So six days they would do that. And then on Friday, on the sixth day, they will go and gather double. Meaning if they gathered three omers, those are the measurements, if they gathered three omers, on every regular day, on Friday, on the sixth day, they would gather six omers. Why? So they would do whatever they need to do, prepare it, bake it, boil it, whatever. And they would eat whatever they're going to eat on the sixth day, and they would leave the remainder, the other half, for the seventh day Sabbath. And he said, on this day, on, on, on the seventh day, this is the only day that you can have leftovers, and I will preserve it for you. They would wake up the seventh day, and they would realize... All the food there is still fresh. Nothing's wrong with it. And they can eat it that day as well. So you see, God, is, God was giving them a lesson like, hey, the, trust in me. Not only are you trusting that I'm going to rain down manna, bread, or they, they said it was like, like honey and wafers uh, mixed together, like, like fluffy, I guess like fluffy bread or something. Um, he said, not only, not only am I raining food down from you from the sky, but I'm also going to preserve it for you when you get a double portion for the Sabbath, as long as you obey me, you know? And I think God is just showing that he can provide. He can provide in the wilderness. He can provide in a home. He can provide wherever we are. And all he's asking us is to keep the Sabbath, to be obedient. What day did our Lord Jesus keep? What day did our Lord, now we're going to, we're, we established the foundation of the Sabbath, the law, how God created it, when he created it. Now we're going to see everybody that was walking with God, did they keep the Sabbath as well? So first, are we going to see that Jesus kept the Sabbath? Jay, can you read this verse, please? Sure. Luke four sixteen. Yes. Yeah. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Amen. So what day did Jesus keep? The Sabbath. The Sabbath. It says, as his custom was, meaning it was already something that he was normally doing. He was used to doing it. Amen. Um, Anna, can you read this verse, please? Mark one twenty one. Yeah. It says, then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught. Okay, thank you. Again, referencing Jesus. He entered on the Sabbath, and he taught to them. Now, Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Meaning, he doesn't change. God said in Malachi 3, 
I am God and I do not change. Now, Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if he was keeping the Sabbath when he was here on earth, means that if he was still here on earth, he would still be keeping the Sabbath. Even after his death, after his resurrection, it would be the same, the same law. Jesus would be keeping the same Sabbath as it was in the Old Testament, as it was when he was first here, and as it still is today. Question five, what day did Mary keep? What day did Mary keep? Now, this is an interesting question because a lot of people, um, you know, there's some churches, some, some churches that believe, uh, well, predominantly the Catholic church believes that, you know, we need to do what Mary, you know, like Mary's like the, the, the intercessor, the, 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 the mediator between Christ and humanity. Well, what day did Mary keep? You know, we have to see that, if Jesus kept the Sabbath and his mother is supposedly, you know, to, to, to be reverenced, you know, what day does she keep? What day would, would the Mary keep? You know, like, you know, if this was, if, 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 if we were to ask her, you know, was she obedient to, to God as well? Um, Luke 23, 56 says, then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils and they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. So this was the day, after Jesus uh, was crucified, after he was brought down and he was laid in the tomb, Mary and the other women had the, had the choice. They had to make a decision. Do I go home and prepare these fragrant oils and spices to anoint my son's body? Or do I stay faithful to the, to the commandment that God has given us to keep the Sabbath as well? And what did Mary do? It says that she rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. Even the mother of Jesus, who knew her son was God, was laying in the tomb, did not break the commandment of God. Question number six. What day did the apostles keep? After Jesus ascended to heaven, what day was it that his own apostles, his own disciples, his followers what day did they keep? Did it, was it changed after Jesus ascended to heaven? Uh, Elijah, can you read this, please? Acts 17, 2. Then Paul, as his custom was, went into them and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them for the scriptures. Amen. So it says, what, what day did he keep? Saturday. Saturday. Amen. Here, I threw this verse in because it wasn't just after, like I said before, it wasn't just before, or it wasn't just at Mount Sinai that the commandments were established. It wasn't just, you know, as Israel was coming out of Egypt that God was trying to get them to observe the Sabbath. But even in the book of Genesis, right after, uh, you know, you have right after the flood, um, right after God calls out Abraham. I mean, all this, like all these things are lining up from creation right after creation. And then you have this verse in Genesis 26, five that says, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my charge or, or, or my call to him, my commandments, my statutes and my law. So even Abraham was being obedient to God and keeping everything that God had asked, which includes the seventh day Sabbath. Acts 13, 42, and 44. Can, Jay, can you read this, please? Sure. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. Amen. So here we have not just the Jews, not just the Jews. In fact, the Jews, it says when the Jews went out of the synagogue, meaning there, there were Jews, Hebrew, circumcised uh, of the circumcised people there, and they were frustrated when Paul was preaching, so they left. But the Gentiles, meaning non-Jews, uncircumcised, 
were there on the Sabbath and they begged Paul to come back the next Sabbath, meaning even the Gentiles were observing the Sabbath, which is, which some say is just for the, you know, just for the Jews or just for the Hebrews, even the Gentiles were already following the Sabbath uh, in the first church or the early church. What day will be kept in the new earth? What day will be kept in the new earth? Isaiah 66, 22 and 23 um, says, For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. This is, if you read this in context in, in Isaiah, some might be thinking, well, what about the last verse in Isaiah? If you look at verse 24 in chapter 66, verse 24 says, And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me. For their worm does not die and their fire is not quenched. They shall be in abhorrence to all flesh. So some, some, some people might be thinking, well, is this saying that that we're going to be in heaven in the new in the new or in the new earth and we're going to be seeing people tortured and and burning in an eternal fire well no because i don't think this is talking about it says on the new earth um but i don't think this is talking about specifically um how do i say this like in eternity what i mean is this has to do with this has, if you look at in first in some Bibles, it says the Lord vindicates Zion. So I think this has to do with right before the new earth is restored, or, or I should say before this earth becomes the new earth. Because the Bible says in Revelation that uh, God's people are going to be in his city, in God's city, in the new Jerusalem. And the new Jerusalem is going to come down, but it won't touch the earth because the earth is still polluted with sin and the, the devil and his demons and all the sinners that weren't saved are still left on here. So I think this is talking about as the new city comes down and we are there ready to receive or ready to, to see the new earth that we are going to be worshiping because the Bible says that we're going to have been with God for a thousand years. So I mean, a thousand years, how many Sabbaths are we going to be worshiping there? Right. But I think this is talking about right before the earth and everything else is destroyed and made new. Then, uh, then we will be keeping, you know, we obviously have been keeping the Sabbath there, but, this is right before everything is, is, is made new because it wouldn't make sense for us to say, well, you know, there is no eternal, uh, eternally burning hell. Um, and yet we have this verse and we kind of just ignore it, right? So with, within context, uh, I don't think this is like in eternity's uh, passing, if not right before, right after uh, the new Jerusalem descends from heaven. And, and we will see all, you know, all the saved we'll see the destruction of those who weren't saved, of the sinners, of, you know, the murderers, the people that rejected Jesus, even the devil and his demons will be destroyed uh, right before us. So what do we do? What do we do? What is the decision that we have to make? Well, we have to acknowledge that one, God created the Sabbath. Two, he gave it for everybody not just certain people or a certain culture or a certain nation, but for all of humanity. Um, Jesus kept the same Sabbath and everybody else after Jesus followed the same Sabbath and we will keep the same Sabbath even through eternity. So what do we do? Well, number one says our first choice is to make sure I don't break the Sabbath. You know, God doesn't want us uh, going against his Sabbath. God doesn't want us to to, to treat it as any other day because he didn't treat it as any other day. He made it a special day for us to be with him. He made it a special day for us to, to commune with him. You know, sometimes we get caught up in the things of during the week and we, we kind of lose that connection. You know, it's like losing a signal on your phone, but as you get closer, you know, to, to God, as you get closer to that cell tower, then the clear, the signal comes in much clearer and everything. So, the Sabbath is the way for us that if we lose that connection during the week, the Sabbath is for us the way to regain that connection and start over again. And God is willing to forgive and he's willing to, to help us. But we, we need to be willing to 
to keep the Sabbath the way he wants to. Ecclesiastes 3.14 says, I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. God does not change. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be taken from it. God does it that men should fear before him. God does not change. He hasn't changed anything. If anything, what, if anything has changed, it's because it's maybe his anger, his wrath hasn't been poured out. His judgments haven't been, been poured out at certain times or on certain people because they've repented. But other than that, God's law does not change. His character does not change. He has been the same and everything he does and has and, 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 and says is eternal, just as he is. Isaiah 56, 2 says, Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who lays hold on it, who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and keeps his hand from doing any evil. So the Sabbath is a special day for God. It's, you can think of it like a, like a special appointment that he has with us. You know, if you have a special date with somebody, like, you know, a special, uh, like a special relationship or a birth date, that is a day that is, that is special to that person, right? Um, so the same way you wouldn't want to miss that day, the same way you, you sometimes we, we, we take a special day, for example, like, you know, our, 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 um, our wedding day, you know, our marriage, that's a special day. That's a special day for, for, for the couple. And so every year the couple tries to do something to, to commemorate that day, right? Well, this is how God commemorates that he is our God and we are his people. He is our creator and we are the creation that he has made in his own image. We take that back all the way to creation and it reminds us that, Lord, Lord, this is, this is the Sabbath that you have given me to remind me that you are my creator and that you are my God. So the Sabbath is a special day and it brings blessings for all who keep it and obey it. Number two, keep the Sabbath by doing God's will. Isaiah 58, 13 and 14 says, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Notice it's the day, it's the Lord's day, right? And look how many times he says, you shall not, you know, you shall honor him, not doing your own ways or finding your own pleasure or speaking your own words. If you keep your, uh, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, meaning like you, you, you're on the right path and then you, you go astray, you go to the left. God is saying, it's not about you that day. It's not about you. You know, we can, when we see, when we rest and we find that rest in him, then we are having more of a delight than if we were to just do our own will. You know, some people say, oh, well, you know, you can, uh, you can't go to the beach or you can't swim on Saturday if it's hot and, and you can't, you know, go to the movies and you can't buy anything. And it's just like, you're right, because that's what you want to do. And God is telling you not to do that thing. It's about putting your attention on God. Anything that would keep our focus off of God is, is, is affecting the Sabbath, the, the, the special or the, like the, the sacredness, the holiness, the, the, the special meaning the Sabbath has because it's God's day that he separated to, to be with us. He could have not given us any day and he could have been like, Hey, you guys can work all the days you want. You know, I don't want to spend any specific time with you. I don't want to set apart a day for you. You know, you don't need to rest. You can work seven days a week, but no, God said you need that day. And then you need that day, especially to spend it with me. And so, you know, we should take advantage of this. As, as God's children, um, not just doing it like out of obligation, but doing it out of love, because that's when we get the most out of it. When we can spend the day being with him, when we can spend the day honoring him, worshiping him, singing, reading the Bible, giving a Bible study, visiting somebody, you know, praying for somebody, serving somebody, serving, serving the community, you know, that's a day that God wants us to honor him on the Sabbath is by being able to like 
put ourselves aside for 24 hours and maybe go out and do something for somebody else. And the last thing we do is obey God rather than men. What should I do? We need to obey God rather than men. It doesn't matter what anybody tells you. It doesn't matter what, tell people, what people say. It doesn't matter what people feel. The Sabbath is God's day, the seventh day of the week. And if it's not written in scripture, then we shouldn't abide by it. We shouldn't go along with it. Acts 5, 29 says, but Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. If somebody's telling you anything different than what's written in scripture, it's probably not what God wants you to do. There's a good chance that that's not what God wants you to do. If it's found in scripture, amen. But if it's not found in scripture, then I can't, I can't go by that. I got to go by what the word of God says. My resolution, my resolution, your resolution. Are you going to make this resolution tonight? I believe the Sabbath day belongs to God. I commit myself to keeping it faithfully. Remember, we cannot, it is not within our nature to stay faithful and obedient to God. But if we believe it with our heart and we ask God, God, I want to commit myself to keeping the Sabbath and I need your help. God is willing to do it. When I got baptized in 2012, I was working at Lowe's, the home improvement store. And I worked whenever they put me to work. And that means I worked the Sabbath as well. Some days I had it off, some days I worked. But when I got baptized, the first thing I asked for was a letter from my pastor. And I said, I want to keep the Sabbath. I need a letter so that I can have the Sabbath off at work. And sure enough, I brought the letter. God opened the, you know, God opened the doors, obviously. And um, HR gave me the Sabbath off from Friday sundown to Sabbath sundown. And I never worked a Sabbath ever after that. I would work every Sunday, which is not a problem. That's not the Lord's day. But if we have a problem with work or, or with some other engagement, um, put it in the Lord's hand and he's going to open the oper- He's going to open the door for you because you want to stay faithful to him. He's done it for hundreds of other people before. And I know he's, he's able to do it for anybody that seeks him and, and wants to be faithful to him. So let us, let us pray and uh, we will close our, our study for this evening. Loving and wonderful Father, Lord, you are God of heaven and earth. You are God of all the things we see and we don't see of all creation. And God, we thank you because you have given us the Sabbath, Lord, and nobody else. You knew that we would need it. You knew, Lord, that, that, that we would become slaves to work, that we would become slaves to maybe school. We will become slaves, Lord, to distractions and hobbies and all other things lord even family friends but god you have set this day apart lord that we might have health that we might have life that we might have rest that god we might have a day to remember you as our creator lord there's nothing more that that you want for us not just to keep all the commandments lord but especially this commandment that allows us to grow closer to you lord and stay connected to you a day that we can put all the focus on you lord the only one that deserves it And so, God, I want to pray for our friends here that are connected, that, Lord, you may be with them. And if they're having any issues keeping the Sabbath, Lord, either themselves or because of something or someone else, Lord, may you open the, the, the door for them, Lord. Break them free of that, Lord, that that might not be an issue anymore. But I pray that you help each and every one of us, Lord, to, to not just treat the Sabbath, especially that we're home um, and not going to church, that, that we may not treat the Sabbath like any other day like just another weekday or just another, another Sunday, Lord. No, may this day be a special day, even in our homes, Lord. May you help us to use it and take advantage of, of you and the blessings that you want to pour out on that day. We thank you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.